Aliens in the Mind and Cornelius and Lark struggle to reveal the truth about the London branch of the telepathic mutants. Aliens in the Mind Co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. Lark and Cornelius have established the existence of another colony of mutants, this time in the heart of London. Flora Keary unwittingly identifies two of them, the brigadier in charge of security at the Home Office, and an MP, Ian Sanderson, who later admits to being Flora's real father. But a new group of mutants surely means another controller, and Lark and Cornelius hope that with Flora's help they can uncover him. Instead, Flora is murdered. No. What? No, don't let them in. But they're only policemen, Flora. Don't be silly. No, don't let them in. Don't let them in. Oh, keep them out. Keep them out. She's putting the chain on the door, Flora. And they're going to kill me. They're going to kill oh, me. Calm down, Flora. Calm down and concentrate. They're going to kill me. <laughs> Now listen, listen to me, Flora. They, they can't kill you if you want them to go away. Now will them to go away. I can't. Make them go away, Flora. I can't. Oh, come on, you can do it if you want to. I can't. I can't. I won't oh, go. Flora, try, try. I am trying. Oh, come on, Flora. It's not working. Come on. It's not working. <laughs> They're going to kill me. Get down, Flora. Get down. Now, keep down, Flora. Don't move. Flora. Flora, are, are you all right? Flora, what? Flora's dead. I can't believe it. Such a waste. Yes, John. But now you have to believe that there, there is another controller right here in London. Part 5. Genetic Revelations. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our sister Flora, here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Poor Flora. I feel sorry for Sanderson. To discover his daughter one week and bury her the next. If she really was his daughter. Uh, George! Uh, Curtis! He's coming over. Uh, oh, thank you both very much for being here. It would have been pretty lonely without you. Well, it was the least we could do. She had no other friends here in London. Not much of a send-off, was it? Just the three of us? It would have been different on Louis. Yes. <laughs> she really belonged to that island. Poor Flora. She didn't even know why she died, did she? Or did she? Well, I... Well, damn it, I've a right to know. And you both know more than you've ever let on. Ian, why don't you come back to my place and have a drink with us? Aye. Aye, all right. I will. Refill? Aye, uh, thank you. Curtis? No, thanks. I'm fine for the moment. So it looks as if Flora's murder was not the first. What you're saying is that her mother was murdered too? Yes. 
I'm afraid so. And you're convinced that the shock of that event was sufficient to uh, unhinge the poor girl? Yes. A and but for that, she would have become aware of her own power over these so-called mutants on Lewick. Yes, that's right. But we know now it's not limited to Lewick. Quite a number of them are established here in London. With a controller behind them. An unknown controller, what's more. It seems incredible to me. Are you sure? Really sure of your facts? Positively. Do you know the names of these mutants? Well, um... Yeah. We're looking at one right now. You. Me? You mean... I... We're sorry. Truly sorry. Oh, you're crazy. Out of your minds, both of you. Can you explain why else you would walk into a psychiatrist's consulting room and just lead Flora away? Me? Yes, you knocked him unconscious with your walking cane and, and you manhandled his assistant. And then you just left Flora in the street as if she were a total stranger. It's not true. It's, it's just not possible. I'm afraid it is, Ian. That same psychiatrist was here with us in this very apartment when you did the whole thing over again. We saw you. I've, I've no recollection of doing any of those things. Absolutely none. Mm, that's par for the course. They were actions motivated not by your own thought processes, but by Flora's. That's why you don't remember them. You see, you simply obey them blindly. But why was I the only one? Why didn't any of the other mutants respond to her signals? Well, you were probably the only one within range. We think a mile is a limit this power can carry. At least that's been our experience. I wouldn't mind another scotch now, John. May I? Oh, please, help yourself. Oh, thank you. I feel dirty somehow. It's as though my mind had been raped. It's not a nice feeling, not being able to call your mind your own. We had to tell you. Oh, aye, aye, I realise that, but... Well, it's ruined my career, of course. Wiped out everything I'd ever hoped to achieve. Oh, no, that may not necessarily be true, Ian. You see, you are the first mutant to know that he's a mutant. I'm sorry to use that word, but... Oh, there's no other way to put it, is there? No. Go on. Well, now you know what is being done to you. You may at least be aware of the actions you have taken and be able to counter them in some way. It is possible, Ian. I well, I hope you're both right. And it could be of immense value to us. You see, we don't know who your controller is. The one who ordered Flora's death? Yes. And we must uncover him. I don't think we can do that without your help. Aye. I should like to uncover him. I should like that very much indeed. Good. Then let's start by asking if you are really quite sure that Flora was your daughter. Yes. Of course, aren't you? Are you positive Flora didn't put the idea into your head quite literally? Oh, the thought never crossed my mind. Oh, it's going to take me a little while to grasp the full potential of this phenomenon, I can see. Yes, it is rather frightening, I must admit. Did Flora put the idea into my mind? It's an ingenious idea, Curtis. But no, definitely no. No... I knew Flora Keary was my child before she was even born. It was the reason that I had to stop seeing her mother. I had to let Flora be passed off as Angus Keary's daughter. The people on the island are pretty straight-laced even today, and any sort of scandal would have been enough for them to rescind my scholarship to the university. For who to rescind the scholarship? The Fellowship of the Church and Louis. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the matter, Curtis? Well, I don't know what you're going to say to this, but... Well, Ian, every member of that fellowship is a mutant. Except the minister. Donald Schooler. Mm. Mm. And for some reason we haven't yet fathomed, he was in cahoots with Molly Kyle, Lewig's controller. Molly Kyle, the controller? Are you sure? Oh, yes. Yeah. She was a great friend of my parents. They were both members of the... The fellowship. Aye. It's snowballing even as we talk about it. Tell us about that scholarship of yours, Ian. Well, it's straightforward enough. It's a, a simple trust set up to pay for the further education of the brighter children on the island. Normally, they're sent away to school in the mainland and then on through university, all expenses paid. Were there many such scholarships? Oh, three or four a year on average. Boys and girls? 
Aye. Can you remember any of their names? Of course. Do you know who their parents were? Don't you mean, can I remember if their parents were members of the fellowship? Yes, that's exactly what he means, in a roundabout way. Aye, well, I can easily check that up and let you know. Oh, that's excellent. Excuse me, I'll just better see who that is. You know, Ian, I can't help asking myself if all those brighter children who received scholarships were, were, were like you. You mean mutants? Yes. And are they all holding down important jobs, like you? Curtis, are you saying that there is a conspiracy to take over the country? I don't know. I just don't know. It's odd. What is, John? There are two of Gulliver's men at the door. Huh? They want us to accompany them to the Home Office. But who says they're Gulliver's men? Can you be sure? I mean, have you had them checked? Well, their papers are all in order. But they want you to bring your passport with you. My passport? What the hell for? But apparently there have been formal complaints laid against us. What? By who? By a certain member of Parliament. By you, Ian. It is my duty to inform you, Professor Lark, that as a result of formal complaints laid against you, Her Majesty's government regrets that it has no alternative but to invite you to leave the country within 72 hours. What? I must ask you to surrender your passport. It will, of course, be returned to you at your point of departure when you finally leave the country. I must protest, sir. I protest in the strongest possible terms. You are in no position to protest, Mr. Cornelius. Oh. Your own activities appear to have brought you perilously close to breaking the Official Secrets Act as it is. Official Secrets Act? Not to mention your own code of medical practice. Or do you call it medical ethics these days? Ethics? What? What on earth are you talking about, man? In your particular case, Mr. Cornelius, I would have thought it unethical in the extreme for a brain surgeon to publicize the name of a patient in the national press, especially when that patient is a senior government official holding a politically sensitive appointment. You can't mean Ian Sanderson. I mean Brigadier Sherman, sir. Who? Oh, you remember, John, that gold-braided blimp who came blundering into Gulliver's office? Oh, him. Well, in that case, sir, I can state without fear of contradiction that Brigadier Sherman is not, repeat not, one of my patients and never has been. That only compounds the situation as far as I can see. But I don't even know the man. Only laid eyes on him once in my life. Oh, forget it, John. Forget it. They've got the drop on us. Your passport, Professor Lark, oh. if you please. All right, there. Take it. Thank you. Here's your receipt. This is preposterous. I warn you, sir, I intend to take this matter to the highest possible authority. I assure you, Mr. Cornelius, this matter has already been to the highest possible authority. Uh, we've been well and truly set up, John. We've just got a grim and bear it. I don't know whether you gentlemen were hoping to perpetrate some sort of political hoax, but I'm bound to advise you that the allegations you've made against Mr. Ian Sanderson are so vicious as to invite legal action on the most stringent terms. Were they not so outrageous, so impossible as to read like something, well, like... Um, Science fiction. Precisely. And not so long ago, they were saying the same thing about getting a man to the moon. I'll get Major Manson to see you out. Yes, sir. Oh, Manson... Uh, perhaps you'll be good enough to escort these gentlemen safely out of the building. Certainly, sir. This way, gentlemen. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Seventy-two hours, Professor, that's all. And please be so kind as to advise us of your time and place of departure. Pompous idiot. Cool it, John. Your burst of blood vessel. Well, I ask you. This way. Colonel Gulliver would like a few words with you. Good. I've got a few choice words I'd like to say to him. Coffee? Strong and black. Oh. There you are. Thank you. Cornelius? Same for me, if you please. Sugar? Please. Yes, I'm sorry about all that. So you damn well should be. Thanks. Well, what else can I do? 
Once Ian Sanderson's complaint came in, the fat was in the fire. I find it a little surprising, to say the least. This morning I felt sure he was on our side. I think he may well be. He phoned as soon as you'd been picked up. I don't know where he got my name from. From us. He almost certainly heard John say it was your men at the door. Anyway, he told me he hadn't laid a complaint against either of you. He suggested the whole thing was either a mistake or at least a misunderstanding. Well, we still can't afford to take Ian for granted, John. He may want to be on our side, but he's still a mutant. You think he might have been under orders to make that complaint? Almost certainly. The interesting part is that he seems to have pieced it all together when we were picked up and reacted accordingly. Just as you hoped he would. Well, at least it's a hopeful sign. Yes. Now, what about this ridiculous newspaper story, Colonel? That really has put the cat among the pigeons. Yes, I'm sorry about that, too. I'll be lucky if I'm not hauled up before the BMA for that little nonsense. What about me, being booted out of the country like an enemy alien? <laughs> well, that was something I hadn't foreseen, I must admit. Do I understand you correctly, Colonel? I should think so, Professor. You're nobody's fool. It was you who gave that story to the press? Yes. But why? Quite simply because I happen to believe your story 100%. I also believe that the two men who killed Flora were almost certainly mutants acting under orders. Under whose orders? That's the point, isn't it, Professor? But before I could come to grips with that, I had to deal with another problem much closer to home. Brigadier Sherman? Yes. Sherman is the head of this department. And my immediate superior. And a mutant. Undeniably. And quite possibly acting under orders, even here, in this building. If this investigation was to get anywhere, I had to get rid of the brigadier. I don't see how leaking the story to the press can help. Well, it brings the investigation out into the open, Curtis, oh. into what is called public domain. Oh. More than that, it pinpoints Sherman as the key figure in what could be a very embarrassing front-page story. And how have your lords and masters reacted so far to this devious scheme of yours? Brigadier Sherman, even now, is en route for the south of France for a period of indefinite leave pending a full investigation. And I'm in charge of that investigation. Congratulations. And I am to be deported. More congratulations. Relax, Professor. I've already made application for that order to be rescinded. Do I get my passport back? Not until I've completed my inquiries. I'm afraid I just can't allow you to leave the country. And to think Britain used to be called the cradle of democracy. That was Greece, dear boy. Glad to get out of that place. It was beginning to feel like Sing Sing at one stage. Oh, I've never been there, but I think I know the feeling. Ah, oh, there's a newsstand over the road. Oh, you want to read about what they said uh, about Sherman, huh? No, I want to make sure they've kept my name out of it. Otherwise, we'll be up to our ears and reporters for the next few days. I won't be a minute. Okay. John, look out! John! John, are, are, are you all right? Oh, oh, it's my arm. Is it broken? No, no, I don't think so. But, oh, that damn driver could have killed me. Oh, well, that was almost certainly his intention. Oh, you serious, dear boy? You bet I'm serious. Me in America and you in the hospital are worse. No doubt about it, John. Somebody's marked our card. With a vengeance. Oh. Come in. Good morning, John. Good morning, Curtis. How's the arm? Oh, it's as well as can be expected, if I might coin a phrase. Well, maybe this will cheer you up, huh? Oh. There, look, there. Four-minute egg, I remembered. Well, <laughs> Coffee, I orange juice, toast, and marmalade nice. a lot. Just like Mother used to make. <laughs> Shall I feed you? Oh, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> I think I can cook you. <laughs> what have you got there? Oh, uh, this? Mm -hmm. It's from Saunderson. He must have pushed it through the letterbox first thing this morning. It's a list of all those he can remember as having been educated by the Trust. It's an interesting little collection of names. Plus details of parentage, of course. All very comprehensive. Here, um, see for yourself. Hmm. Oh, Colonel Gulliver should read this. He may be able to track these people down. Yes, and find out what they're doing now. Hmm. I was checking Hugh's observations against these facts that Saunderson has given us. And what did you find? Nothing. Hmm? It's as though I had a key in my hand and couldn't find a lock to fit it. I wonder if I've got the answer. What's that? I couldn't sleep much last night. This wretched arm kept me awake. And the strange thing was, I couldn't get Flora's mother out of my mind. Flora's mother? Hmm. But why? Huh? 
But according to Flora, her mother was murdered by Molly Kyle because she had begotten Flora in sin, as she put it. Yeah, with the young Ian Sanderson. Yeah. Well, now, why would Molly Kyle suddenly punish a mutant for something they'd done 13 or 14 years before? Mm, perhaps she'd only just found out. But how? And who could have told her? Only Ian Sanderson and Flora's mother knew the secret. He had left the island, and she would never have risked breaking up her marriage. Not after 13 years, certainly. Then the answer must have been Flora herself. Exactly. And when Flora suddenly started developing into a controller... It must have given our Molly one hell of a shock. To put it mildly. And what's more, Molly would have known instantly how it had happened. Yeah. What do you know about Flora's assumed father, Angus Keary? Well, he wasn't a mutant, but his father was. Ah. Oh, where does Sanderson say that? He doesn't. Huh? I marked all the passages in Hugh's notebook that refer to Flora. Here, look, see? Ah, uh ha. -huh. Good. Hmm. Th then what about Flora's mother? Well, just a minute. Let's see. Uh, no, both her parents were mutants. And so were Sanderson's. He told us that himself. All right, so we have a working hypothesis. A controller is born out of the union of two mutants, and the parents of both of them must be mutants too. Oh, we may have to go back even further than that, John. We, we can't be sure. I know, but it's enough to be getting on with, surely. Okay. There are half a dozen names on this list who have two mutant parents. And a lot of their grandparents will be dead by now, so we can't check them out. Exactly. So any one of these could be a controller. John, supposing none of them were controllers? Oh, come on, Curtis. There must be two whole generations here. There has to be at least one controller. If not, where else do we find him? That's the big question, John. And the answer gives me a feeling like hairy-legged spiders crawling over my scalp. Right, in this country, we call that dandruff. Uh oh. <laughs> you know, for a so-called upright Englishman, you spend an awful lot of your time burbling on your backside. Well, I have a poorly arm, and I had to enjoy this delicious breakfast which you prepared for me with such loving care. Well, you finished <laughs> it now, so yes. you've absolutely no excuse for staying in bed any longer. Come on now, get up. All right. And sure. let's go over to Saunderson's place. It's important, John. Come on. Uh, can I uh, offer you something? Uh, tea? Uh, coffee? No, Not thanks. me, thank you. I've had breakfast in bed. Well, uh, what is it that brings you here in such a hurry? We want some information from you. About this educational trust. Oh, I. Yeah, where was it administered? On Lewig, of course, Curtis, uh, by the fellowship. No, 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 no. That's where the beneficiaries are, where the scholarships are awarded. We want to know where the money is. It can't just be suspended in space. I mean, someone has to be responsible for it, for its investment, for collecting and distributing the interest. If we could find out who does that... We'll be getting much closer to the truth. Aye, well, uh, it, it's administered here in London by a small merchant bank. I should know, because I'm a member of its board of directors. You are? What are we waiting for? <laughs> well, if it'll help, I'll, um, I'll make an appointment for you to meet the bank's chairman. Well, fine. Well, on our way, we might as well drop in at the home office and leave that list of names with Colonel Gulliver. Right. Oh, uh, by the by, yeah? if you'd care to come and look out of the window. Uh, look, down there. See that man in a dark jacket and pinstripe trousers? What about him? Well, uh, he's been there for two and a half hours. I, I just thought it rather strange. Ah, it might be one of Gulliver's men. On the other hand, it might not. Anyway, if he follows us to the bank, I think we'd be justified in asking him for his account number. If you wouldn't mind waiting in here for a few moments, gentlemen, Sir Graham McCarden has someone with him at the moment, but he ought to be free directly. Thank you. Thanks. 
Oh, I hate having this floor-to-ceiling glass all round. Yeah, so do I. Makes me feel like a goldfish in a bowl. <laughs> or a germ under a microscope. Oh, really, Curtis, you have an uncanny knack of lowering the tone of any conversation. <laughs> well, it can often be quite beneficial to get back to basics. Oh, dear, you're obviously about to expand another of your extraordinary theories. Oh, wily Uncle Corny. Get on with it, then. You know, it just dawned on me that we've been looking at this education trust as something which has developed quite naturally out of the situation on Lewick. I thought we were all agreed on that. What, from one tiny island? A few hundred simple, hard-working, God-fearing crofters organizing this, this fellowship, this education trust? Oh, it's all too much, John. It's far too much. But what's the alternative? that Lewig may have started as an accident of nature, but it has been deliberately built up, exploited, for the sole purpose of producing mutants who can be groomed for high office, like Ian here or, or Brigadier Sherman. And half the names on Ian's list, I shouldn't be surprised. Right. Y you mean it's been set up like a sort of mutant breeder unit? More like a stud farm. Oh, it's horrible. Yes, especially when you think of Molly Kyle and the Reverend Donald Schoolar as the farmers. Oh, farm managers, more likely. Now, if you're right, then the real villains, the masterminds of this business, are hiding behind the facade of this merchant bank. And all this plate-glass opulence around us. <clears throat> Excuse me, gentlemen. Sir Graham is free to see you now. If you'd kindly care to step this way. Oh, uh, just a minute. Who was that who just came out? That was Sir Graham's last appointment, sir. The Reverend Donald Schooler. There he is now, sir, just going towards the main door. Do you know him by any chance? Oh, yes. <laughs> we know him all right. And the man he's talking to now. Oh, do you, sir? That's Sir Graham's chauffeur. But he's the man who's been waiting outside my flat for two and a half hours. And sure as hell he wasn't waiting for a bus. It was part five of Aliens in the Mind, co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius, with Fraser Carr as Ian Sanderson, William Edel, Gulliver, James Thomason, Home Office official, and Andrew Sear as Manson. Aliens in the Mind was written by René Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes.